just heard from a legend. Yeah. Yeah, John yeah. Conyers is a legend. He's been in the Congress fighting for working people for over 30 years. Thank you, John Conyers, for a lifetime of service. Well, a little over a week, we're going to be making an historic choice in this state and in this country. And the voters are going to choose between candidates of the Democratic Party, candidates which have fought for working people, for middle-income people, candidates which have taken on the most powerful interests of the state and country. In Washington, we have taken on the following in just a year, almost two years now, that President Obama has been president. Just think about this list. We have taken on Wall Street. We have taken on, we have taken on the credit union. When I say credit union here, what we have taken on are the credit card people, not the credit union. We, we have taken on the insurance industry and we passed health care reform. These are some of the most powerful interests in the country. We reformed the credit cards so no longer can credit card companies raise your interest rate retroactively. We stopped that. And it was Democrats that stopped that. And when Wall Street almost took this country under, it was Democrats that led the fight to say no to Wall Street, never again. You're not going to do that to it. Now we're going back to Washington, hopefully with at least the strong Democrat majorities. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to fight for tax cuts, not for the wealthiest among us, but for middle-income working families. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to go back to Washington as Democrats, and we're going to again resume this battle to stop companies from moving jobs overseas. We're going to try to end that. And we're going to try to stop the Republicans from stopping us from doing that. And we've got a clear choice. We've got a clear choice. In this state with Bert Bonero, in Congress with a number of our congressional candidates, with our, our judicial candidates, the choice is whether we're going to move forward, and that's what that D means when you drive the car, or whether we're going to move backward with the Republicans, and that's what that R means when you drive the car. That's the choice. But it's not just people who are going to get out and vote who are going to make that choice. People who stay home, I'm afraid, are going to be making that choice as well. We cannot let people stay home. As unhappy as some people are, because we still got economic problems, Lord knows we still have foreclosure problems. But the choice is stark. Whether we're going to stay with people who have fought to change that, to bring us out of the ditch, or whether we're going to turn to Republicans who put us in the ditch to begin with. That's the choice that we have. So, with Bert Bernero, Brenda Lawrence, and the other Democratic candidates, including the ones that we've nominated for the Supreme Court, and don't forget that nonpartisan ballot, we got a very stark choice in front of us. And, folks, we got to get out those folks who are discouraged and say, well, maybe we're not going to get out to vote. We've got to get to them to get them to vote. Because we know that when they do get out to vote, they're going to vote for people who have proven that they will fight for working people. If Bill Clinton can come all the way across the country to get us to vote, we can get out to vote too. Now let me introduce a real fighter for Michigan. She has been a great partner in the U.S. Senate. She has been as tough as she can for jobs. There's no greater fighter. She's a powerful member of our leadership on the Democratic side of the Senate. She has fought for the auto industry. She has fought for health care. My partner, Debbie Stabenow.
All right, it's so great to see all of you, and I want you to give one more round of applause for an incredible United States Senator, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, Senator Kyle Levin. I am so proud that he is my partner in the Senate, and together we are fighting for you, and I want to make sure we've got a fighter in the governor's ship come November, come past November into January, and that's why I'm supporting Virg Bonero and his partner, Brenda Lawrence. We get two great people. Now, I know you've also heard from some other folks I want to make sure and mention, and that's Jocelyn Besley for Secretary of State and David Clayton for Attorney General. You know, we've got the smartest, toughest, most confident, hardworking people in the field. I'm so proud to be a Democrat. I'm so proud to be Democrat. We've got John Conyers and Hanson Clark that are going to be leading our efforts as we go into next year in the House of Representatives. And I also want to mention, you know, the nonpartisan part of the ballot, the place where decisions go, if you're a victim, if you're an employee looking for rights, if you're a consumer, if you're a patient, if you're someone looking for a fair shake before the Michigan Supreme Court, remember Alton Davis and Denise Langford Morris. They are our champions. Now I want to just take a moment and take you back to a couple of years ago, toughest times for us with the auto industry. We didn't know what was going to happen. I'll never forget in December of 2008, being on the floor of the Senate when we were fighting to get some help when Wall Street uh, collapsed, credit collapsed, and the industry needed help, and Republicans voted down that help in December 2008. It was one of the, for me personally, one of the low points uh, of my life, certainly, uh, fighting for you, and I know for Carl as well. But then we saw a brand new president come in who fought for the American big majorities in the House and the Senate. And don't take for granted what happened, because we saw a Democratic president who understands that this is about jobs, this is That's about right. making automobiles in America, it's about making sure we see the words made in America again, and he stood with us, and jobs are coming back to Michigan because of it. Please don't forget that. Please do not forget that. You know, a lot of folks in other parts of the country thought that was a bad idea. Well, i tell you what, look around at the folks at the Jefferson plant just added the second shift, and they're going to add the third shift in the next few months. Look at their faces. Talk to them. You know, this is about jobs, and I'll tell you what, at that time when we needed fighters, and we had, you know, a governor fighting with us and Democratic state legislators, but we needed fighters from our mayors of auto communities to come forward, and Verge Bonero was there. Verge organized mayors across all of the states that had auto plants. He organized that. He brought people in. They met with us. You know, he went on television, and folks said he was an angry mayor. Well, you know what? We were all angry at the fact that they were, they were willing too many of the Republican side were willing to take down Michigan and take down the automobile industry. And you know what? I was sure glad he was there fighting for us. That's what we 